Hello, in this video, we're going to take a look at one of my books here from my collection. It is called Analytical Chemistry, and it's a Shams outline series. This is one of my Shams. Uh, I collect math books and science books and other types of things too, not just books, but mostly books. And I like collecting books because when you collect books, you can get uh, new knowledge from old books. Uh, and this is a book uh, that you can get new knowledge from, even though it's old. It's called Analytic Chemistry. It's the Shams outline series, which means that it's probably pretty good for self-study. Uh, all the shams are good for that. Uh, some are better than others, but you can learn what's in the shams and then apply it directly because they have exercises and examples for all of their content. So 1985, that's the copyright on this one, Adon Gordas. Yeah, that's who wrote this one, hardcore. Analytical and Mathematical Review, Statistics and Probabilities, Free Energy and Chemical Equilibrium, Strong Acids, Strong Bases, Simple Weak Acids and Weak Bases. This is more, more content here so you can see some of the other sections here. And we'll see how it starts to see, you know, how hard is this? Um, can you just jump in? Uh, you know, this is something that you probably would need to know some chemistry for before jumping into it. Analytic chemistry by and large employs the international system of units, SI, if it is agreed that the gram used for masses and the liter used for fluid volumes are to be taken as SI derived units. Cool. And so here it has a table uh, of different things. Physical quantity, amount of substance, unit name mole, unit symbol MOL. We have density concentration, kilogram per cubic meter, gram per liter. Then here they have the symbols that they often use. So kind of a refresher, perhaps, uh, of things that you may have seen. Um, it's like, okay, yeah, all right. Physical constants needed in analytic chemistry are listed in Table 1-3. The spectral energy factor will be used in Chapter 13. And so here we have some physical constants that you might be familiar with, actually. Um, I mean, I've seen most of these, actually, so, uh, or all of them. Avogrado constant, Faraday constant, gas constant, electric charge magnitude, um, Planck constant, speed of light, and the spectral energy uh, factor. So these are things you see. Uh, now, I've never actually taken a course on chemistry, but I've seen a lot of this stuff from, um, just from mathematics and from other fields, you know, from biology, um, from physics. Uh, so. You do uh, see a lot of things like this uh, in those other courses. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. A lot of examples here. So you have full examples that are worked out. So that's kind of nice. More examples. And it's like little subsections. And then you have solve problems, which is really useful. I'll give you some more light here. Balancing some equations. I have to smell it here. I'm sorry, just give it a whiff. Ah, oh, smells so good, so good. So just a, a, a book that you can get that's super affordable. Um, I probably did not pay very much for this book. I probably got it extremely inexpensive. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. It is Analytical Chemistry by Gordas. And if you want to learn math, I do have courses, not chemistry courses, but math courses. They're on Udemy. But if you buy them, please use the links through my website, mathsorcerer.com. All the courses are there, and I lowered the prices, so if you use the links, you should get a, use, a good price, and it also helps me. So yeah, mathsorcerer.com for math courses, and I'm trying to think of the chemistry I have in my courses. I know in my college algebra course, I have some, uh, there's some examples where I do some chemistry, you know, if that counts. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, I don't, have, I don't have any chemistry courses. Someday. Anyways, until next time, keep doing mathematics.